Let's move into your new documentary, The Lost Century. Sure. It's all about advanced technology, how it's been for hundred how it's been around for over a hundred years but kept secret. Zero point energy, yep. a lot of people call free energy, is also mm -hmm. called the quantum vacuum. This would basically eliminate the need for fossil fuels, utilities. Wind, every, solar, yeah. yeah. Winds, every every means to power that we have now would make it completely obsolete. It would be unlimited, clean, and right. free energy. And we've had it for 100 years. How do we... So let's get into this. How, how did you discover this stuff? Well, it was an outgrowth of me looking into the, the UFO UAP issue. Because once you realize these objects are real, three-dimensional, the very first question, actually, when I, was, when I go up uh, to Capitol Hill or someplace, I'll put up the footage, the footage that the Pentagon said, this is a real 3D object, infrared sensors, no heat, no jets, no rockets, and certainly no nuclear power plant on it, because, I mean, those things are hot, right? Mm -hmm. and there there are, have been nuclear-powered aircraft and satellites. But I said, how is that moving? at those speeds, and then straight up against gravity. This is the alternative energy and propulsion systems. So I always tell people, forget all the mythology and everything. It's an alternative energy system. Now, it's a very advanced one because it also flies. Now, to be, to be really clear, I am not advocating not the release of the things that fly yet. Why? It's a missile delivery system. So you don't really want to open source an electrogravitic anti-gravity system that allows terrorists in Mogadishu to get a dirty bomb over downtown D.C. in two or three seconds, mm -hmm. right? No. Now, but the things that would sit at your house, like your heat pump, all right, or in the hood of your car, that would run your car or your factory or your business or your home, those devices that are not things that fly. Those are just pulling energy from the fabric of space-time around it. And physicists have estimated that the volume of space in a coffee mug has enough potential energy to boil off all the oceans of the world. Is that much latent energy. So tapping into it to run the entire United States, the whole world, be like taking a thimble of water out of the Great Lakes. So it is what, you know, Tesla called it the infinite energy field. And it began to be discovered, if you look at it, all the way back. But it, as soon as you step into the reality, the three-dimensional reality of these uh, UAPs and UFOs, you immediately begin talking to people, and this is what happened to me in the early 90s, to people who know the physics of the energy systems, because these things are not using oil, gas, coal, nuclear, what have you. So it's a, it's a natural extension of the problem. And I point out to people, one of the central reasons for the secrecy that got out of control under Eisenhower's late, last four years as president was because once they realized how this works, they realized the big industrialist and financial and global moneyed people, banking, this would be the end of that entire sector of the macroeconomic system. Well, that would have been great if it had been transitioned before I was born in 1955, because look at the world we have now. But it really could have started coming out in the early teens and 20s. If you look at the documentary, The Lost Century, the, the subcaption is, and how to reclaim it. We talk about how we need to come together as a people and develop these energy generation systems and open source them, meaning that it's no patent no intellectual property held back at the first level of this because the patent office will seize it. We prove that in the documentary. We have a national security order on a patent that a scientist I know submitted. We took his name off of it. So the question is, are there some people who can financially uh, put up the funds, and it needs to be a substantial amount, you know, 50 to 100 million to start, to create a high energy physics lab that develops this and gets it out to the public, no intellectual property holdback. Or if there was that much funds available, we could go to some of these scientists who probably have these and say, look, 
we want to just acquire this. You'll be, here's $10 million. Now go and relax. Let us move this out to the public. You can't do it. Most of these engineers and scientists and inventors think they're going to do it the way they do a new software program. And they're going to try to monetize it through uh, intellectual property protections and patent. You cannot do that with this because the system is so completely weaponized and corrupt. And I'm talking from the patent office on uh, that the only way to do it is to do an open source release of it massively through the Internet blockchain. So that's what we're doing. But the technology, if you go, if you look at this documentary, you'll see this trajectory. There's a, a great photograph with Nikola Tesla with this engineer farmer, self-taught guy, I believe it was 1908 or 1902, the caption. And this guy had like an earth battery. He had some uh, metallic stakes and wires in the ground. He was pulling resin in. It was running his farm. Wow. I mean, my, even my father, you know, I wasn't alive. He was born in 1916. This was before my dad, who was hand-to-hand -hand combat in World War II with the Japanese amphibious landing unit. Uh, but... You know, I'm going, what the heck? You know, we have our planet. Half the planet's population doesn't have indoor plumbing. Three billion people have no way to cook their food. They're cutting down the rainforest. Three billion. The biosphere, even if you don't think climate change is real, five million people die from breathing particulate matter, soot, all over the world from this noxious stuff we keep burning. Yeah. So we need to take care of our creation, the earth, and our future, and it isn't gonna happen with a windmill and a solar panel, believe me. No way you're gonna run eight billion people off of the, those technologies. We're going to have to have innovative, high-tech solutions to the energy and environmental and poverty problems. I mean, look, you know, I just wanna backtrack on that real quick. When you're talking about people dying from, from inhaling these particles and these oh, chemicals yeah. and shit, I mean, you know, this is, this unfortunately is a touchy subject, you know, the the, the pollution and, I, and climate change and all this shit. But what I can attest to that is 100% fact is what you just said, because I've been to these parts of the world. Yeah. I've spent over a decade in these parts of the world. And you see, one, you see all these veterans coming home, dying of weird cancers from shit that they breathed in overseas. Yep. And and I can tell you in the winter time, the winter time in Afghanistan, the soot is so thick in the air mm -hmm. that if you go outside for, I mean, we're talking just yeah. five minutes, yeah. and you go back inside and spit in, mm -hmm. spit in the sink, or spit in whatever, blow your nose, yeah. you're it, you're 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 going to spit gray, right? And but those fine particles get into your lungs and mm -hmm. then your circulatory and heart and cause a huge number of problems. Not just cancers, but I'm talking heart, lung disease. So why are we doing that when these technologies have existed? Now this same corrupt organization, because it doesn't just deal with one issue, have been responsible for basically hoovering up, vacuuming up all these technologies for 100 years. Uh, I know people personally, personally, who have been murdered because they had one. And it's because they very, against my advice, AMA, against medical advice, against their own security interests, they wanted to keep it secret. And they thought they were gonna be so clever and they were gonna outfox this big super state of thugs. I'm going, yeah. dude, you have no idea what you're up against here. And then they think they're gonna do encryption and keep it secret. I'm going, oh my God. You think this group needs to worry about an electromagnetic encryption when they can target a volume of space anywhere and extract anything being said? I mean, I can... I mean, it's, you know, and it's, I understand it because if you're in the normal engineering world, you're it's not gonna know this. It's hard to believe it. It's hard to believe it, but I said, you know, if you don't believe it, just wait. You're gonna be dead or it'll be confiscated. And I, you know, you're only, you're lucky if all they do is come in and kick your door in, hit you with a national security order and drag it off. You know, that's your best outcome. That's your best case scenario if you do it the conventional way. So I go, look, you know, it's like, what is that saying attributed to Einstein? The, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. The reason I can prove that the strategy most people use doesn't work is that we can prove these technologies have been around for over 100 years, and you and I are still tied into a coal-fired or gas-fired power grid, right? 
So if, if the strategies, if the, if the conventional business and technology strategies were going to work, they would have worked before, you know, you and I were born. So we need to think, we need to have different thinking about this strategically. So what we're saying is all of these technologies, if they're used for peaceful pur purposes, would really give us a whole new civilization, beautiful. 